everyone and welcome back to Shelf Life. My name is Simran and this is my podcast Shelf Life. We talk about books, their philosophies, but most importantly, our personal relationship with the book. And today we have a very special guest with us. We have Shalini Saukar. Shalini is a celebrated author of three novels and several short stories. Uh, she is also a former IT professional and she's had really quite a journey. Uh, Shalini, I'm so excited to have you here with us. And, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and maybe something that a lot of people don't know about you. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for having me on Shelf Life, Simran. Uh, I'm so glad uh, to be here and um, to be connecting with everyone. Um, so I'm an author. Uh, I've written three novels, as you uh, mentioned. I'm also a columnist with uh, The Post India and SheThePeople.tv. So I've written articles uh, related to uh, creativity, lifestyle, travel, uh, marketing, and um, I'm also a TED Circle speaker. And uh, I'm happy to share that, you know, recently I uh, received the Coimbatore Literary Awards for my book, Confessions of an IT Employee. Yay! Uh, congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, will, I also received uh, Global Women Inspiration Awards uh, mm. for uh, all my literary achievements recently on International Women's Day. So just that happy That is to so share lovely. That. So, so lovely. And, you know, all of this is just so wonderful and I'm really glad to be t talking to you today and there's so much that we want to discuss um, but starting with you know how did you get into reading and I know that you read a lot obviously uh, mm -hmm. so how did that journey start and you know were there people in your yeah. house that read or did you pick it up from someone outside of your home how did that where did that influence come from um, so my journey with reading, I would say, started very early, uh, you know, um, from my childhood days. I, I was always, uh, um, I, I was a talkative kid, but I also liked, uh, you know, um, reading a lot. I, I enjoyed um, stories. Uh, so my mother was uh, you know, the first person who started telling me stories. Uh, as a child, when I, when I was two years old and I would not um, have my food, I would not have dinner without her stories. I would be like, you know, tell me another <laughs> story, tell me another story. I would, I would literally bog her down. So, um, and she never ran out of uh, stories to tell me because at one point of time, she started making up her own stories. So oh, that was also my introduction to writing stories, <laughs> not, not just reading. Um, so after that, I think from when I was five or six years old, I started picking up, you know, these tiny, um, uh, what do you call them? Fairy tales, I think. Mm. It, it, yeah, fairy tales and all this uh, Aladdin and um, Huckleberry Finn and um, mm -hmm. those kind of books that uh, I started my journey of reading with. Um, one book that I remember was... Um, the Little Princess that that had an influence mm. on me uh, in my uh, very early childhood days, yeah. right? Uh, so so it was a tragic story, but it it was something that stuck with me. Mm. And um, also Black Beauty, that is something I enjoyed as a, I think that was before I was ten years old. You know, so so wow. these are the books that I remember that I read before I was ten. Uh, after that, uh, during my middle school, I would say um, I started reading Enid Blyton and Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew and, uh, you know, the, the usual All kind the of 90s kids read. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so so uh, I had a set of friends because, uh, you know, um, I had a set of friends in school who all read uh, sure. books and we were all encouraged to go to the library and read books. Uh, so... So that is something, that's how I started. And then uh, there was this whole era of Harry Potter. Everyone was picking up Harry Potter and that, that was something uh, different. Uh, literally every kid and child, uh, I mean, every uh, child in school started uh, reading, right? Because, because yeah. of Harry Potter. Um, so that was, that was another um, uh, uh, era of, of my life where uh, um, I read. And after that was uh, Sydney Sheldon, Dan Brown, during Lovely. high school days yeah. right so 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 that's how it's been and and i also write i also uh, you know like reading uh, classics right mm. uh, like gone with the wind uh, um anna karenina so 
So wow. yeah, and, and that I picked up I think <laughs> after after the college. So that's wow. been my journey so far. That's a lot of books, and you've really you've actually covered such a huge, uh, vast ground. And you know, it's so funny because like usually when I do these episodes and I talk to people, uh, a lot of them have, you know, either they've read Harry Potter or they've read these, you know, Huckleberry Finns and your Hardy Boys and all of those. Very rarely do I come across people who've read both. and that's such a lovely right. thing honestly i mean even i can't say that i've read both <laughs> so <laughs> i i'm very impressed this is a huge lift and i hope you keep adding on to it you know i hope you keep reading and Absolutely. discovering new yeah. genres and um so tell me a little bit more about you know uh, your career has had a very interesting trajectory mm-hmm. you started as a it professional and a lot of it i'm guessing uh also inspired your latest book um and yeah you know how was how did that happen like how did you go from being in the it field to being like a celebrated author what was that like uh right so um it it was my childhood dream to uh write stories so it was not something that i uh picked up accidentally or you know after i grew up um when i was 10 years old i think um so so as kids we have various dreams right we have um all sorts of all sorts of dreams so when i was very young i used to think i would become an astronaut i would become an artist uh, but i think when i was 10 i uh, had this dream of becoming a writer and mm. somehow at that point of time that uh, i knew that that was the only thing that i could act upon and um, i wrote um, uh, i wrote two novels actually as a child uh, wow. so as a one, child uh, i wrote on my own. as a child yeah oh, wow so i i don't know i was just super excited that i had this <laughs> dream and i was like no i think you know <laughs> i'm going to start it right away and um so i think i i wrote uh, two novels so uh one i wrote on my own and one uh, with a friend of mine hmm. um though they were they were they were pretty they, they were not published or anything they were pretty embarrassing and i just put it in the closet and just let anyone read the first one <laughs> uh the second one i was okay with i let my friends read and <laughs> so so that was that was how my journey with writing started as a child um hmm. but then uh, you know i had to choose the conventional route uh, my parents <laughs> wanted me to um, you know uh, because i would say fortunately or unfortunately i was good with uh, good at academics they wanted <laughs> yeah. me to choose something that was more conventional <laughs> right mm. so uh, so i uh, took up computer science engineering and uh, i mm. worked in the it industry and uh, i worked for about uh, 2 to 3 years and yeah uh, my my dream of writing started coming back to me and um, i i uh, started writing short stories i started um, you know i gave it to strangers to read it and mm. uh, i wanted to know if they can connect with the stories if that's if if my stories had an impact on them and only then act upon it right so um, yeah so then i knew that you know my childhood dream was coming back to me and i um, really wanted to take it forward yeah. uh, so i wrote a couple of short stories which were published in magazines um and then i knew that uh, so one was published in a magazine called born too soon it was mm. a local magazine um and uh, another was published in an international magazine called fantasia divinity magazine mm. so both were fantasy short stories actually oh, lovely. that i wrote and um, mm. after th- yeah yeah so after that i knew that uh, this is what i wanted to get into full time and so i um, quit my it career it job and then i moved into uh, full time writing wow yeah. wow that that's so wonderful and you know i absolutely relate to what you just said about uh this having this like dream right and you you were so excited and so driven by that dream and you almost don't even know where that's going to lead you you don't know how you're going to get where you want to get or where you don't want to get but you are just so driven that you have to act upon it and i absolutely you know agree with you that when a lot of times we are just so excited by things we just do it and uh, <laughs> even with like this whole thing about being good at academics and that's what <laughs> you know people just assume that you have to take up these conventional jobs and conventional roles right. uh but you right. still had that fire in you you still had that dream in you and you kept it alive and 
now we know where you are and uh, it's just such a wonderful story to keep hearing again and again and yeah i i love that i love That's that very uh, kind of <laughs> yeah totally and um i love that you so you you talked about writing your first two short stories were um fantasy right yeah. um uh, yeah. but is that a genre that you particularly like or that you are comfortable with or was that something you just wanted to try out and see how that goes um so for me you know the story uh, the story that i write does not actually depend on the genre i don't go by genres whether it comes to reading or writing um so i feel that you know um recoding harry potter in my own way i would say um, you know the the author doesn't choose the genre the the story <laughs> chooses the author so <laughs> right so yeah so it was not planned i did not plan to write a um, fantasy short story i did not plan to write two fantasy short stories it was just something that came to me and i was i just felt that this is some idea that i want to work upon and um, I, i really liked the idea so i got down to write it and uh, that's how i went about two fantasy short stories but it is a genre that i really like and mm. i know that in india it's it's a genre that's unexplored you know it's not yeah. uh, explored much it's explored in the form of mythologies um apart from mythologies there there are very few um, urban fantasy novels that you uh, get to read in mm. you know uh, from indian authors so that is something that i want to work in the future on like that's a genre that i want to take up in the future uh mm-hmm. but currently i do write uh, crime thriller novellas and inspiration romcoms <laughs> yeah and you know that's yeah. um it, it's such a good segue to this next segment of our uh, episode today where we're going to be talking about a genre that mm-hmm. you said that you really liked which was thrillers and uh, yeah. you know that it's it's very interesting because we've never done a like genre like thriller before on the podcast and um i want to just start off with asking you so why thriller why do you read thriller and also why do you write thriller all right so so um i think we all uh, you know live in this world of um live in a very fast paced world right now right currently and we're all looking for instant gratification we want something that is really quick um so the reason behind reading or writing uh, crime thriller novellas you know is that i wanted to give my readers a a quick bite of suspense where uh, you know someone can read the entire book in one sitting and mm-hmm. yet you have that uh, you know it's long enough for you to catch the feels of the book so that's why i started writing crime thriller novellas and um when it comes to reading i love reading thrillers because there's something that um that's one genre of books that you cannot put down uh, once mm-hmm. you begin reading no matter how busy you are you just want to know what happens next so that's that's uh, the reason that i pick up reader uh, i mean i pick up thrillers uh, more and more often yeah i absolutely agree i think i was uh, um i think it was i was watching some interview again with some author who was talking about um the same thing you know why they read thrillers and why they wrote thrillers and he said mm-hmm. that it's the it's the anticipation it's the fact that you just you don't know what's going to happen and you have to know it right. so there's no other way out of it you have to know what happens at the end of the book so you just you have to hold on and you have to finish the book um so you know do you find it particularly difficult uh, i think you so you mentioned that you write fantasy and you write uh rom coms as well but then you know it's the story that comes to you first and you don't really yes. look at the genre but when it comes to thriller there's so much calculation that you have to do you know you have to have a like a set of uh clear points right i'm guessing i i mean i've never written thriller right. but i'm right. that is right. how it goes so right. um is yeah. that more of a difficult journey to go through when you're preparing to write a thriller novel especially since you have two thriller novels mm-hmm. right that you're right um so i wouldn't say it's difficult it's actually something that is uh, it's far more exciting to write thrillers than uh, you know ro- uh, inspirational romcoms because um i would say for me it's easier um mm-hmm. 
I get those plot twists and plot points quite easily when I'm writing the thrillers. Uh, but you know, when I'm looking at inspirational rom-coms, uh, so that takes in a lot more effort to like um, make it very interesting, make the plot twist that comes naturally with thrillers. It's it's not something that uh, you would have to you know worry too much about. Hmm. Uh, so for me, I find that writing thrillers is uh, much easier. And uh, it's it's my, it's something I'm more comfortable with. Um, mm. It does require a lot of planning. Of course, it requires a lot of planning. But I think that's where uh, you know the the um, because um, what happens is when I'm writing a thriller, um, the story excites me. The story um, surprises me in many many different ways that some other genre might not. So right. so it's that surprise that I'm not looking for in the story. So when I know that the story or this point is surprising me, this is uh, this is a shocking revelation for me as a writer, mm. then it's definitely going to work with the reader. So that is something that, uh, you know, um, uh, that I think about while writing the story. Oh, wow. I absolutely love what you just said about, you know, you also getting surprised by the story. And, um, you know, one doesn't really ever consider that, that the writer could be surprised by something, by something in their story as well. But that's so lovely. And, you know, I want to just jump off with that point and ask you, um, do you consider yourself a very instinctive writer or do you really sit with your stories and let them sort of simmer uh, inside you? Or do you just, you know, one day decide I'm just going to write it down? <laughs> Right, so so I'm more of a on the fly writer, more of an instinct writer than uh, somebody who plans out her novels for days together, and then uh, because I feel that um, ideas um, have their own. Um, so uh, there's there was this book called um, Big Magic by um, Elizabeth Gilbert. Hmm. So she has a very interesting take on uh, creativity and ideas especially. And hmm. it's, uh, it's something that I totally relate to and I agree with her. So she says that uh, ideas have their own vortex of energy around them. And um, you can't let them, you have to, of course, you have to let it uh, simmer for a certain bit of time, um, you know, a um, certain amount of time. But uh, if you just wait too long, that idea is going to leave you and it's going to go to the next person that's going to take that idea forward because ideas Lovely. have their own energy and they, they find us and then they find, um, go on to find other people. So, so you just have to see that if this idea is for you, you take it and you work on it. If it's not, you let it pass on. So, so mm. that's how. I, so that's why I like to, you know, um, especially with uh, thrillers, of course, I... Um, uh, because uh, I write on the go and, uh, you know, I um, take some time to research it beforehand. I don't outline the complete story because, um, like I said, in their own uh, point of views, right? Uh, so yeah. if I restrict the story, if I outline it completely, I'm not giving any room for characters to grow. So mm -hmm. in that way, I don't, uh, you know, plan the entire thing. I just know at least um, I know a couple of incidents that happen in the middle or incidents that happen at the end. I know what's the, um, what the ending is going to be. Right. Or I, I know what the beginning is, you know, how it all started and, uh, hmm. uh, and where it goes from there. So it's, it's one of these things that I plan out uh, completely, but leave the, uh, leave the rest to the characters to, uh, you know, have their own energy and uh, surprise me. Hmm, absolutely. I, I love the way you frame that, honestly, and I agree with everything that you say. Uh, I love that you uh, let your characters have a life of their own and you let them breathe and become real people. And that's what I think let, allows people to really connect with those characters because they are able to see them as people and not just, you know, figments of someone's imagination. So I absolutely agree. And I think, you know, that would be a really good point to uh, start talking about our own favorite thriller novels and um, you know I can just uh, start this whole conversation off by saying you know I think my favorite thriller novel of all time uh, would have to be Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn and I think <laughs> yeah I loved everything about that book and I think it was really you know I think that is how you write a thriller novel I feel um, so, you know, you go ahead. Tell me about your favorite thriller novel. 
Uh, absolutely. I loved uh, Gone Girl as well. Um, and I love uh, that genre, right, of um, women-centric um, thriller novels. That, that is something that uh, really excites me. So most of my thriller novels have, uh, the thriller novels that I've read have been in the, you know, um, have had similar milieu, have had similar uh, characters. Mm. So one of my favorites was, um, a recent favorites was uh, The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Yeah. Um, so that, that's something uh, similar to Gone Girl again. Right. So, um, yeah, and, I um, I was just going to come to Girl on the Train. I, I love that as well. And even, uh, I think since we're talking about Gillian Flynn, even uh, the the woman in the window, which is not Gillian Flynn, but it's AJ mm-hmm. Flynn, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, yeah, and again, woman-centric, and it has a very flawed woman at the core. I, I love that as well. Go ahead, tell me about more of these novels that you've read. Um, also, uh, while growing up, it was uh, Sydney Sheldon's thrillers. So that was, um, again, Sydney Sheldon writes women-centric uh, thriller yeah. novels, right? So, so, so these, these were some of my favorites. Also, uh, Dan Brown's novels. Mm, um, yeah, absolutely. I, just a side note, but <laughs> I think I was um, 15 years old and mm. it was like two, three, four years of reading Sydney Sheldon and then I finally realized that Sydney Sheldon is actually a man and I just <laughs> I was so blown away I was like how how is this even possible but yeah that was my anecdote about Sydney Sheldon um, but I agree even Sydney Sheldon is such a classic and I think anybody who's really trying to get into you know thriller novels and wants to read more um, classic thriller novels. I think Sydney Sheldon would be a great place to start, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, absolutely. I think he had this knack of, he, um, apart from storytelling, he had this knack of getting into people's psyche and, mm. uh, you know, actually um, knowing women from a very close point of view. Like, um, I think he actually was able to put himself in, uh, you know, in a woman's shoe before writing uh, yeah. about women, right? So, so that's what, um, makes it so different from any other thriller writer um, yeah absolutely absolutely and i think even that's what probably that's what got people to really connect with gone girl as well because the characters were just so well written and you know it even if you can't believe the story which you can um it's the characters that really pull you in and I think even someone like Agatha Christie could do that. Like she could really pull you in with her characters. And have you read Agatha Christie? Like, how do you feel about her? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah? During my growing up days, I've, I've uh, read a lot of Agatha Christie as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I think you just kind of, we kind of had to. I think these were just the classics that you read and then later on you went on to read some of the other newer ones and newer authors and newer books. So uh, these were like the classics. And I remember even when I was growing up, I think for my 14th birthday, if I, if I recall correctly, I, ha- I got this uh, collection of Dan Brown novels and they were all of Dan Brown novels. And I just, I really lost my mind. I was so excited. And, you know, you, when you're reading Dan Brown novels, that's your first introduction to, I think, conspiracy literature as well. Um, you start really getting into that zone. I mean, have you uh, read more writers like Dan Brown or is that something completely unique? Um, like Dan Brown, um, not really, not really. I've read um, Ashwin Sanghi, who is, you know, um, you could say it's it's a similar genre, right? Um, yeah. The Indian version of similar genre is even called um, Indian Dan Brown, I think, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Um, no, that's true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think for the yeah. Indian context, so, that would be, uh, that would make sense. What about Indian thrillers? Have you yeah. come across any good Indian thriller novels? <laughs> Apart from yours, of course. Uh, yeah, I thought... <laughs> yeah, that's kind of you. Uh... <laughs> Um, I've read uh, Novani Chakravarti novels uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to Indian thrillers. I think yeah. he writes yeah. wonderful thrillers. Mm. Do you feel like there's some sort of uh, difference in the way possibly Indian writers, uh, you know, 
engage with this genre and the way these other american uk uh, writers from the Brit britain they engage with this genre do you find some sort of difference there uh, i would say the the primary difference is uh, you know um in the way that um indian authors deal more with um emotions right we mm. would all be as indians are more um connected to one another and we uh, kind of enjoy that emotional side of uh, you know even when it comes to a thriller right we we want to see the emotional side of um, uh, what um, each one is going through whether whether it's the uh, perpetrator or the um, victim we we want to see their um, what their life is like what is hmm. so that's something that uh, you don't get to um, you know completely enjoy in a western novel yeah. um for example you, you don't actually get to enjoy that in dan brown's novels hmm. right because it's it's um it's it's very fast like you don't actually get uh, into their past into their future it's it's hmm. about what's happening right now what's happening currently but uh when you're reading an indian novel you you get to read both you get to read um uh, you know the thriller part of it as well what is happening what is uh, going on also the the emotional um um, um side of it right the, the emotional yeah. background of it yeah definitely what, what started this whole thing right? yeah. yeah and how I... it's affecting uh, somebody but that uh, also something that i really enjoyed with uh, girl on the train i think um that was uh, that was uh, girl on the train and gone girl right so both are both show the emotional side of um, the thrillers so yeah. yeah yeah i think my usually my complaint with the you know conventional uh, thriller genre and the thriller novels is that is just that that you know the the writers sort of don't invest too much in the characters and their emotions and you you kind of get short change in that sense but i agree with you know writers like jillian sen and i'm guessing even the indian writers you you do get into that zone and that's really lovely right. and i think the next you know the next thing that i really wanted to ask you about and talk to you about was that i think there's a very thin line between thriller and horror and i think you know i came i was thinking about that and i think it happened because i was reading uh chuck palahniuk's uh, haunted you know he's the guy who wrote fight club and all of these other novels and um haunted is his collection of short stories and um they're usually i mean they're they're classified as horror but i think i would call them thriller as well because they're very you know they're really intriguing and you don't really know what's going to happen so you know do you also find that uh, a little bit tricky you know how do you separate horror from thriller and is there really a separation like how do you go about it especially since you're a writer so how do you do that um, so so uh, i think there's no uh, you know there's no um, clear separation between any of the genres that we take right mm. every um, novel is some way connected to every other genre it's it's not um, a stand alone um, genre that would be put in but then uh, you can say that um uh, when one thing overshadows the other you pick that as a genre mm. but um when it comes to thriller and horror yes um i would say as a reader uh, it could it could be a little i mean you could you could disagree with this but um i think there's there's a little bit of uh, you know there's there's uh, um there is a boundary for me because um i'm super scared of thriller i'm super scared of uh, horror right i i i have read a couple of horror novels but <laughs> they they have a different impact on me and um, i that's one genre that i would probably not write uh, <laughs> because uh, you know it it has a very impact on me and uh, it it just takes a uh, very long time to get out of it mm, absolutely so, i so, so, that's that's um it's it's more intense horror is more intense i would mm -hmm. say and uh, it's it's got horror can have supernatural elements and which you don't actually find in thrillers thriller right? but but Absolutely. the pacing of the story is yes, uh, of course it's it's similar it's it has that both have a similar impact on you hmm i agree i i think one is more intense. yeah i absolutely can't read horror either right? i get super scared and i can't watch horror films either 
um and i'm very slowly starting to watch thriller movies uh because even that can really kind of scare me a bit but so you know do you also find yourself uh, drawn towards thriller movies or is it just books that you find more interesting oh both both i completely yeah. enjoy consuming uh, this content in all forms right movies books tv series web series um novels short stories and all <laughs> yeah that that that's beautiful and i hope that someday even your thriller novels can get you know adapted to maybe a show or a movie and we would all love to watch that so i hope that happens but it's very strange how it's always a family or you know it's either like a couple or a husband or wife or something of that sort always forming you know the crux of every thriller novel um and i don't you know it i mean this is just my observation it might just be completely inaccurate but i think i don't know how that happens like what is it about these family dynamics or a relationship mm-hmm. between a man and a wife or something like that what right. mm-hmm. people really interested in that like as a writer why do you think other writers play around with that so much <laughs> right i i think it's it's just um so so when it comes to crimes or thrillers right it's um, people commit crimes right it's it's not um, we never convict animals we never convict uh some other supernatural force but it's 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 people and i think uh, it's just that um and people come with baggage people come with emotions people come with a lot of um we're all flawed we're not perfect human beings we've not um not everybody has of course everyone has faced different kinds of uh, difficulties in their lives and sometimes it twists them in a wrong way and um, so i think it it's just uh, you know that that's why there's there's this family dynamics in in every thriller novel which uh, talks about you know um how or why it, uh, you know the, the the crime is taking place or you know what what is happening and how it's affecting somebody else um in a way and um the the um, couple angle to it is 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 just i think it's it's uh, it creates a lot of um because uh, these are um you know um things that um i would say that uh, you know we we all we all have relationships in our lives and uh, our relationships affect us in many different ways so i think that's a dynamic that everyone wants to uh, you know um um apart from uh, you know a uh, family it's 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 uh, your romantic relationships that kind of um shows you who you are right it mm-hmm. gives you a different um light uh, it throws a different light on you as a person yeah. so and that is something i think that's why people tap into it more people want to read about it more because it's it's something very personal and uh, um books are known for you know the getting into people's personal life personal mm. uh, that's what uh, is the difference between books and movies because we we don't get to have that person connect or um with, with a movie's character or with a movie character but you get to have that with with a uh, a fictional character because you're able to see that person in different light you're able to see that person's um uh, connections with different people in the in his or her life and uh, Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that you know, you really summed it up perfectly. I think that's what books really do. They 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 yeah. reveal you to you, like they they yeah. open you up in a way, and you kind of confront your own emotions. You see who you are and why are you rooting for this character, right? You you kind of understand yeah. yourself better, and that mm-hmm. has been kind of the aim of this channel, this um, the books that we read, the people that we invite. um it's right. all about how do you know yourself better and how do you connect with other people through these mediums of you know books and stories and all of these amazing things um so yeah you really yeah. summed it up perfectly and i think that would be a great time to kind of wrap up our conversation as well and i think yeah. before i let you go i just have to ask you you know this is something that we do on the channel where every time uh, a guest comes over and we discuss you know their favorite book or something of that sort um i yeah. usually ask them why they think that story deserved to be told and why that was written but since mm-hmm. you are a writer you are an author 
um, I want to ask you why, I mean, you've written three books, so you can pick any of the three. Um, why did you think that that particular story needed to be told? And why did those characters need to have a light? Um, right. So, so I would uh, pick my latest, I think, Confessions of an IT Employee. Uh, it's a rom-com. It's an inspirational rom-com. So um, it's a story of four uh, people, actually, um, commoners, uh, youngsters, right, who are, uh, who've just uh, moved out of um, college and uh, they've gotten into this um, job and uh, they're, they're in a different environment. They're in a working environment and they're, you know, feeling like adults for the very first time. Um, so, so it's about how they are dealing with uh, their dreams, their desires, their passion, and uh, also what is uh, what is uh, you know um, the 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 their real life. You know how is that affecting them uh, and their dreams? In what ways? So it's it's a story of um, self discovery. It's a story of battling uh, depression. Um, you know, finding one's uh, true self and true worth. And uh, that's why I think it, it is something that needed to be told. Absolutely. I love that. And, you know, all of your books are going to go on my reading list very soon. And I'm sure that's going to be the case for all of our listeners as well. Um, yeah. I'm going to be linking all of your, uh, you know, your Amazon links. I'm guessing I'm going to be putting them in the description. So listeners, you guys can check it out. And even the names of the books that we have discussed are going to be in the description. So make sure to check that out. And uh, yeah, Shalini, I'm so glad that you were here and I am absolutely happy that we got to do this. Uh, you were a delight to talk to and I really, really enjoyed having you here. Thank you. Likewise, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, Simran, and being on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me again. Thank you for coming and thank you everyone for listening.